On July 27, 2025, a Mooney M20J carrying a young family of three went down just seconds after takeoff from Nampa, Idaho. The crash killed 43-year-old pilot Brandon Leroy, his wife Justine, 30, and their 23-month-old son Paxton. A devastating loss. And here's the thing. This wasn't in bad weather. This wasn't some freak storm. Conditions were clear. So the real question is, how could a normally reliable airplane fail to stay in the air for barely a minute? The preliminary NTSB finding has just been released, so now let's walk through it to see the early lessons that we can learn from. The flight itself was supposed to be straightforward, a hop from Nampa Municipal in Idaho to McMinnville, Oregon. But within one minute of liftoff, everything went wrong. A DSB data gives us a pretty clear picture. At about 5.40 p.m., the Mooney rolled down runway 29 and lifted off. By the time it crossed the departure end, it was only about 50 feet off the ground and moving at 67 knots. Now, in a Mooney M20J, you'd normally expect a stronger climb out. Instead, things immediately started slipping the wrong way. Instead of accelerating, the speed bled off. About 57 seconds after takeoff, the plane was only about 338 feet above the ground, and the speed had dropped all the way down to 58 knots. That's uncomfortably close to stall speed for this aircraft, especially with flaps and gear possibly still down. For a brief six-second window, the Mooney basically leveled off, barely hanging in the air, before the descent began. The final ADSB hit showed just 2,800 feet MSL and 68 knots, and that was it. Seconds later, impact. And here's the part that jumps out at pilots. The best climb speed, VI, for a Mooney M20J is around 90 knots at sea level. This aircraft never even got close to that. It's like the whole flight was stuck in this sluggish, dangerous zone between flying and stalling, and it just never had the margin to climb away safely. The crash site was only about a mile from the runway. The plane came down into a storage building in a nose-low but upright attitude. Thankfully, no one on the ground was hurt. The debris field was surprisingly small, about 50 feet by 50 feet, which tells us this wasn't a high-speed impact. It looked more like the plane just mushed into the ground after losing lift. The wreckage adds a few more pieces to the puzzle. The landing gear was still extended, and that's a big deal, because on a Mooney, leaving the gear down after takeoff creates a ton of drag, eating into already precious climb performance. The propeller and engine were shoved back into the cockpit area, which suggests the engine was making power on impact, but we don't know how much. Could have been partial power, could have been full, prelim doesn't say. Investigators confirm flight control continuity, meaning no evidence of a jammed elevator rudder, or aileron, and while both fuel tanks ruptured on impact, there was no post-crash fire, which is unusual, but not unheard of. Taken together, the wreckage paints a frustrating picture. This wasn't some mid-air structural failure or total engine explosion. The airplane just never had enough performance after liftoff to get itself climbing safely, and that's the truly scary part. It's the kind of situation that sneaks up on you, quietly, until there's no altitude left to fix it. Now, before we dive deeper into the technical factors, we have to pause and recognize the human side of this tragedy. On board that Mooney were Brandon Leroy, 43 years old, his wife Justine, just 30, and their little boy Paxton, not even two years old. Community reports say Justine was originally from Kingsburg, California, and the family had been living in Idaho. They weren't test pilots pushing limits or thrill seekers chasing danger. They were just a young family heading out on what should have been an ordinary trip. And that's what makes this so gut-wrenching. Because behind all the data points, the performance charts, the aerodynamic analysis, this is really about three lives lost in an instant. And when that happens, it ripples far beyond aviation. Families, friends, entire communities feel the weight. We can never lose sight of that while we try to learn from it. So, let's break down the environment that day, because it set the stage for an extremely challenging takeoff, 
Nampa's field elevation is already 2,537 feet. At 5.40 in the evening, the temperature was a hot 89 degrees Fahrenheit, and the altimeter setting was 29.93. When you put that together, the density altitude calculates to over 5,100 feet. That's the key. This Mooney was basically trying to take off as if the airport were at 5,000 feet above sea level, not 2,500. Why does that matter? Well, thin air means three things. Less thrust from the engine, less lift from the wings, and longer takeoff rolls. You need more runway to get airborne. And once you're in the air, your climb performance is immediately weaker. Add in the likely high weight, three people plus baggage plus fuel, and you've got a loaded airplane working with very little margin. Then there's what the wreckage showed, the landing gear still extended. And on a Mooney, the drag penalty from leaving the gear down is huge. It's like trying to drive with the parking brake half on. It just saps performance. On top of that, the ADSB data shows the plane never got close to VY, the best climb speed. It was hanging around 60 knots, barely above stall speed, when what it really needed was closer to 90. At those numbers that you're not climbing, you're just surviving. And if you bank or turn at those speeds, the stall margin vanishes. There's also another factor pilots have been talking about, mixture setting. At high density altitude, if you don't lean the mixture before takeoff, you're basically choking the engine, running it too rich, and losing horsepower. That can make the difference between a sluggish climb and a safe one. And here's something really crazy. Eyewitnesses and even some pilot forum discussions pointed out that the Mooney reportedly used most of the runway just to lift off. That is an extremely frustrating red flag. If an airplane isn't performing the way you expect on the takeoff roll, that's often the moment to abort, not push ahead. Put all these pieces together, high density altitude, heavy weight, gear down, slow airspeed, possible mixture mismanagement, and what you get is a razor thin margin for safety. A plane that should have been climbing confidently instead struggled just to stay in the air beyond the airport boundary. And this is where the broader pilot community has been weighing in with some very honest, very raw insights. One of the hot topics is the so-called impossible turn. That's the idea of losing power on takeoff and trying to turn back to the runway. Some folks speculated that at around 200 feet AGL, the pilot may have tried to maneuver. But here's the thing. Experienced Mooney pilots will tell you flat out, you need 700 to 1,000 feet at minimum to even think about turning back. Below that, the risk of stalling and spinning in is almost guaranteed. And if you're already flying at 60 knots instead of 90, forget it. That's a one-way ticket to a fatal stall. So what are the takeaways? Pilots in the community keep stressing a few fundamentals. Brief your departure. Have a plan for what you'll do if you lose power after rotation. Straight ahead into a field may be survivable. A low altitude turn often isn't. Always calculate density altitude before the flight. A hot day at a high field can change the performance game completely. Lean the mixture for maximum power when density altitude is high. Retract the gear as soon as you've got a positive rate of climb. And, most importantly, fly the correct VI climb speed, not just anything above stall. Another lesson worth saying out loud, a long takeoff roll is a warning sign. If you're halfway down the runway and the plane isn't accelerating normally, that is the one time where aborting might save your life. And again, none of this is to say this is what happened here. The final NTSB report will dig into the engine the weight and balance, and the pilot's background. But these are the conversations pilots are having right now, and they're timeless lessons that tragedies like this reinforce. So, to sum it up, November 5764 Hotel went down with a young family on board, and the preliminary findings suggest a plane that simply never climbed away from the airport. High density altitude, possible performance issues, and a razor-thin margin for safety all played a role. But only the final report will tell us exactly what went wrong. What we can do in the meantime is respect the loss and take away lessons that might keep another pilot, another family, safe in the future. Aviation is unforgiving, especially when performance margins get tight. 
If you want to follow this case as the NTSB digs deeper, and if you want to keep learning from real-world accidents so we can all fly smarter and safer, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned.